Hey guys, Will here. Welcome back to Modeling from the Ensign's Chair. I'm excited today to start a new model. Uh, I'm still working on the uh, 1537 smoothie. I've uh, been posting some photo updates on Facebook, on uh, the Ensign's Chair Facebook page, and on uh, the Star Trek Modelers group on Facebook. So, uh, if you're not a member of the Star Trek Modelers group, it's a good group to be part of. Uh, get a lot of answers. If you got any questions, just go on there. Ask a question, you'll probably get about 200 responses, and uh, you'll get some really good feedback on it. And uh, it's helped me out a lot, so um, if you're just getting into modeling especially, definitely check that out. But uh, So today, this is going to be episode one, uh, just starting on uh, working uh, on the saucer section for the original series uh, 1350. And uh, done a little bit of work to it, not much. Uh, we'll talk about it in a minute. I did want to say, though, that... Uh, as soon as I pull this model out to start on it and get one out of my box, this comes in the mail today. This is the uh, lighting kit for the uh, 1350 Katinga. So uh, the actual model, uh, apparently they ship separately and it'll be in tomorrow. And <laughs> that'll go on my waiting list for uh, whenever I get around doing that build. So. Um, but anyway, let's uh, get to work on this. We'll take a look. I'll try to keep these uh, episodes short so we're not sitting here for, you know, 30 or 40 minutes at a time watching me. But uh, give me a minute. Put you on the desk. We'll get to work. All right, guys. So uh, when I did the introduction for this, I had talked about uh, the main thing I was going to start working on was my light blocking. Um, I did attach the BC deck and uh, started working on that as well. But uh, open this up. You can see uh, my light blocking. Uh, basically, I did uh, two coats of black, um, just used an automotive uh, primer, and uh, then I did a coat of uh, gray, the uh, Tamiya Fine, fine uh, Primer Gray, just so my white wouldn't have to work as hard to uh, lighten up against the black. And then I just used a cheap can of uh, Tester's um, white primer for the inside. So I've got a couple coats on here. I uh, do still have a couple light leaks. Uh, you're going to find with this kit that typically around uh, where your uh, connecting pegs are and also on the lower section where they, uh, they insert that, you're going to have light leaks um, around there. I'm not too worried about it. Um, like I said, it's very minimal light leakage right now. A couple little other little spots I think where I didn't get quite enough primer around these. And then where the uh, BC deck attaches, there's a noticeable light leak around that. But that's okay because uh, uh, I'm going to uh, do some putty around the seam. Um, I've been looking at the studio model. And on the studio model, you can, you know, the, the seam is noticeable on the studio model if you look at it. But uh, I don't really want to see the, the seam on it. So I'm going to fill that with some putty and uh, sand it down. And then if I need to do, uh, we're going to do another coat of primer on this anyway. Uh, before I paint it. So uh, that should take care of any remaining light leaks. Like I said, there's very few light leaks uh, left in it at the moment. So I uh, got the light blocking done and uh, started working on a BC deck and went ahead and attached it. And uh, I started working on the windows. And uh, let me just set this lower section out the way for a minute. Because we're not going to be messing with that today. But uh, I started using, I used the window inserts at first. I, I put them in and took a look at them, and uh, I, I, don't, I don't really like them. The first issue I ran into was that, uh, and I posted this on Facebook, these uh, two smaller windows back here. Uh, they actually came out of the mold, apparently. Uh, they, they're supposed to be round, and they looked just, they were just notches uh, when I pulled them out the box. So uh, they didn't look it looked very good. I even had to ask and make sure and look at the uh, studio model images, which I've got pulled up here. Um, but you can see that uh, those windows are definitely supposed to be round. And uh, so that's just one of the things you may have to deal with uh, when you get this model is that uh, some of these windows, I know some of them do have flashing. I haven't had too much of a problem with flashing. Um, on the, the bottom section here, right on the uh, what is this? Uh, I think it's starboard side on the right side, as you as it would be. Uh, I did have some flashing on these windows here, but other than that, uh, most of these windows you can see are pretty pretty clean, they're pretty clear. Uh, the windows around the edge, I'm not seeing too much of an issue with. 
So uh, for the most part, it, it's a pretty good mold. It's just uh, those windows back here, uh, the ones up the front were fine, but these, these ones back here and on this side uh, came out more like slits than they did round windows. So uh, I had to do a little bit of work on that. And, uh, but I put the, uh, the clear plastic piece for the windows that comes with it in and really because of the issue with these be being slits and not being perfectly round, that part doesn't really fill it like it should. Um, and then, I don't know if it will come up on camera, but uh, I can post a picture. It came out uh, in a photograph I took. But the, the windows don't, for one thing, they don't sit flush um, with the outer part of the, the, the uh, saucer here, or the BC deck here. Uh, and you can see a little bit of a notch along the top here. So the window doesn't, I didn't really like the way that window was looking in here. So uh, what I did was on this side, um, I came in and uh, I filled those windows with, and again, I don't know how well that's going to show up, but I did post pictures on uh, the Ensign's uh, Chair web pa uh, Facebook page and on the uh, Star Trek Modelers Group Facebook page. So you get a better look there. But uh, what I did was I, I just came in and I used a, uh, I used my pin vise, and I believe this is a 3 sixty-fourths inch. I know it's an odd size, but these are the Dremel drill bits. But the, on this, it was a 3 sixty-fourths inch drill bit. And I just drilled those windows out, and they're probably a little larger than what they uh, originally are in the mold, but that's okay. Um, they're not obviously way oversized, but uh, I just drilled them out. Uh, and got them around like they're supposed to be. Uh, and then what I did was I came in and I used some micro crystal, crystal clear and I uh, filled those windows in and uh, let that dry. You're going to want to let this stuff, uh, I know uh, Boyd over on the Trekworks uh, was using um, the Solo Res, which is S O L O R E Z, I believe. Uh, which is pretty expensive. I did find some bottles that are pretty cheap. I might order some to try it out because um, it's always good to try out new products. Uh, but I have used Micro Crystal Clear before and uh, the only thing is with this versus the Solar is this takes a while. You're probably going to let this dry and set up for about 24 hours um, before you do any sanding on it because that's what I did here. Um, I took the Micro Crystal Clear and I filled the windows in and uh, let it dry. And I came back with uh, some sandpaper. I think I started out with a, let's see what we got here, a 220 grit sandpaper. So um, a little rough, but uh, it just took down the edges a little bit. And then I went to a, I think it was a 660 or six, see, a 600 grit sandpaper and, and just kind of smoothed it back out some. So. Uh, when I go to prime it, you're not going to see any scratches or that. Um, and I did go over this whole saucer, if you notice, and I don't know if you can tell. But uh, I did sand this with the 600 grit all over. Uh, you can do that as long as you're doing light sanding. You want to worry about taking out these, these details on the back here and any other details. Just do, a, do a, a little bit of sanding, some light sanding, just to give it a little bit of a rougher surface. And uh, so anyway, once I did that and got them nice and flush, with the hole, uh, sand them all down, and uh, I mean that's where I'm at with it right now. Is uh, I think it turned out pretty well. Um, still got some. Uh, oh, so what I did was uh, for the moment, um, I, I neglected to mention when I did my introduction that I'm using the Aztec dummy uh, masks, window masks, and uh, this actually is a pretty good good set. It, it came with a lot more than I was expecting. Um, with this kit, you get uh, not just the window mask, but you get some, some templates as well. It comes with a good set of instructions. It tells you where to do everything, how to paint those, uh, the mask for the, uh, the landing, landing gear pads, I think it is down the bottom, the triangles on the bottom there, and how to do that. Uh, it also comes with a mask for that gray right under the front of the nacelle there. So. Uh, that's great. It also came with, uh, if you had the, the saucer with the uh, grid lines on it, which is the, the uh, original kit, 
uh, some of those windows were out of place and it even comes with the uh, template I came with a template, which probably won't show up too well because this is black. But I uh, came with a drilling template to fill those holes and re-drill the holes correctly. So I don't really need that because the smoother saucers that was already that issue was fixed. So, but uh, you get your uh, your nice uh, painting templates for those uh, triangles on the bottom, and for those uh, well, I don't know what you would call that shape, but the, <laughs> there's a gray gray pattern underneath the front of the uh, nacelles. So you get your painting templates for that. So that's awesome. Um, and you get a whole bunch of these uh, window, these window templates. Let's see if I can get you get that to show up on camera. But you already see where I plucked out some to uh, for those windows on the BC deck, and it's marked on here too. It'll say BC saucer, uh, your rim windows. It really doesn't matter. I, I believe I'm pretty sure these are all the same. All these square windows. I think the rounds. You got some different sizes because you've got uh, the ones I pulled out, and then you've got some really small ones. Uh, on the edge up here so uh, so far it seems like a pretty good uh, pretty good kit to use so I'm using that so my way what I was saying was I uh, sanded this down and I used my uh, Aztec doing masking window masks to mask off these uh, windows and I just put a just a, a temporary I mean, it wasn't really meant to be permanent but uh, just put a coat of uh, to me a fine white or fine gray primer on here just to kind of get a look and make sure everything is going to look right and uh, like I said I think it's turned out pretty well I don't know how well it's shown up on the camera there but uh, like I said I've got pictures uh, on both those Facebook pages uh, so I'll just show you real quick how I went about doing these windows and uh, these are like I said I've already drilled these out and uh, it doesn't matter if they're not perfectly round when you drill them out All right. I may have already put some crystal clear in there. Oh, ha, duh, I got the window window uh, piece still in here. Let me get that out so we can go to work here. All right, but there's your uh, piece for the uh, clear windows. And you can see the problem with this is, is these things really don't have any definition to them for the smaller windows. They're almost just like a pinpoint. So, um, they didn't work out as well as I would have liked them to, so we'll toss those. And uh, but like I was showing you, I've already drilled these windows out. They're a little bit bigger than the drill size because they were not perfectly round to start with. But that's okay because uh, what we're going to do is fill these in, and uh, once the micro crystal clear sets up, I'll come back and sand them like I did on this side, and then I'll use the uh, Aztec dummy window mask to mask it off, and then I'll do the primer, and that'll light block it, and all you'll see is the round for the the round window you won't you won't see uh, the issue that is there right now so uh, what I do is I take uh, a micro crystal clear just put a little bit on this tip you can use uh, anything with a fine point to it um, this is just one of my little picks that I'm using but we'll just take it and uh, we'll put some in this window here back and clean. And the great thing about this is uh, you can come back and wipe off any excess. A little bit in this one. Alright. Now these bigger ones, really, this is the main reason you've got to allow a lot of drying time for these because uh, you got to put a good amount in these big windows to get them to fill in. And the thing is with these, uh, especially these these big square windows, this stuff is not going to sit um, flush at first. When it dries, you're probably going to have to add a little bit more, which is what I had to do on the other side. Uh, once this first application dries, you're going to have to add a little bit more, uh, not a lot, just enough to uh, raise it up even or flush with the the uh, outside of the BC deck here. All right, uh, I can go ahead and do these front ones as well. Actually, I think this is, these are the ones I already put some in. So, but it's not flush. So what I'll do is I'll just add just a little bit to it to 
bring those flush with the outside. And you just wipe it off like that. And uh, you can see those are flush there, maybe. So this stuff's really easy to work with. Um, so I've got that and here's my paper towel. And we'll just come back and wipe off the excess for now. Oop. Wiped off too much. So come back. Fill that back in. So you can see all those all those windows are filled in now, and uh, I'll let this dry for a while, and I'll come back and uh, add a little more to make it flush with the outside if I have to. And uh, once that completely dries, like I said, I'll give it uh, till tomorrow. I'll give it about 24 hours, make sure that uh, crystal clear has a chance to set up all the way before I do any sanding on it. And uh, once that sets up, we'll come back in. We'll sand it and uh, we'll have some nice flush windows. And all we gotta do is come back and uh, paint it. Uh, use the, the masks, mask it off, paint it, and uh, you'll just have some nice windows. These ones, uh, this one here, I might have to do a little more sanding too. It looks like I've got a little bit of a lip there, but that's all right. Come back and fix that. So, um, but that's where I'm at with it right now. Uh, just trying to get these windows straight on here. And uh, hopefully everything else, I should be able to use the actual uh, clear parts that came with it. I've got the, uh, remember I'm using the uh, Polar Lights lighting kit with this. Excuse the dust. <laughs> and uh, that comes with some clear parts. And I uh, don't think I'm going to use the uh, orange and blue, but the green and red, um, because when you look at the studio model, it actually used, uh, it wasn't clear clear lenses, which, you know, with a colored bulb underneath. These were actually colored. Um, you can see the one over here is red on the, uh, I guess it would be the port side over there. Uh, but you see that's colored red, and it's the same on the other side. It's, it's a green, actual green bulb or a green lens there. So, which is nice because I want to, uh, when this is off, and I am not don't have the electronics on that, I want it to look, and I want the lights to, you know, to be able to look at it like it's, uh, you know, what colors are there and everything. So, uh, I'll be doing that. And uh, I've got the uh, supplemental photo etch set, and I had to reorder the uh, grills because I cannot find, I thought, I'm pretty sure I'd already ordered it, but I cannot find the photo etch set for the grills. Uh, but I'm not nowhere near ready to use those, so. It's no big deal. Um, as far as the uh, directions for this, you know, they're pretty straightforward. Uh, you've got the basic instructions that come with the model kit itself. And then you've got the supplemental set that comes with the lighting kit. Um, and it's pretty easy to follow. Uh, it's broken down into, so right now if I'm working on the saucer section, I'm gonna use, uh, this is my lighting instructions for the saucer section. Uh, you've got instructions how to put the uh, or assemble the busser collectors for the nacelles, um, for lighting the hangar bay or the shuttle bay, for lighting the uh, connecting dorsal, and obviously the last part is uh, your secondary hull, doing all the wiring for that. So it's pretty easy, uh, pretty simple instructions to follow. Uh, we'll get into that more when uh, once I get this set up. And uh, I've got these windows in place, and then we can start doing some lighting on it. And uh, then comes the, uh, the question of how I want to do the bridge. Uh, some people, uh, you can do the bridge either facing forward, or you can do the bridge uh, lined up with the turbo shaft. So that which would actually put your, uh, the bridge at like, a, I think it's like a 45 degree angle to the forward, uh, forward facing of the, the, the uh, saucer itself. So. I haven't decided yet which way I'm going to go with that. Um, so 
We'll talk about that when I get to it, but uh, I think that's basically all I want to get into on this episode. I was just showing you the, uh, the windows, the prep work, to start working on this, and then when I come back next episode, we'll be working on the lighting, getting that in place. Uh, we'll start working on that, uh, that bridge, um, and then uh, we'll, we'll see what decisions we've got from there. But i uh, glad to be working on something a little bit bigger than the 1537. The 1537 has been stressing me out a bit because uh, there's a lot of smaller parts for that. So glad to be working on this and uh, looking forward to getting it done. But uh, until next time, I appreciate uh, all the subscribers. We're over 200 subscribers right now on uh, YouTube, so I appreciate that. Thanks for everybody's support, everybody's comments and feedback. And, uh, you know, just uh, if, if you've got, if you're working on this same model, please feel free to share it uh, either on uh, my Facebook page, uh, if you're not on it, there's a link below. There should be a link below every time I post one of these. And uh, please share it on the Facebook page there. Um, if you're not a member of the Star Trek Models group, please go join that and uh, share your pictures there as well because uh, a lot of good feedback. And uh, if you need help with anything, there's a lot of good guys on there that give you some information. So, until next time, everybody, keep modeling.